Welcome back, tribe. I have a video here from a small channel, Robert C. Edson. Never go back to old relationships, towns, or jobs. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up, guys? Hope you guys are having a great weekend. I just want to jump on here and holler at you guys, man. I was kind of missing you. You know, so, uh, man, today I had to drive all the way back to my hometown to freaking vote. I had to go. I had, I, I'm still registered in Kentucky where I'm from. And I haven't changed the registration and I waited too long and I waited too long for the mail-in ballots and all that mess. So there's nothing nobody could do for me. Today was the last day for early, uh, early voters, early voting. So I was like, hell, whatever. I just woke up. I drove about 150 miles all the way back home to go vote. I felt them. This will probably be the last time I vote uh, unless something like this happens again in life. But really, I don't think I'll be voting any other election. I'm not sure, though. We'll see how crazy the world gets. Um, I'm not a very political guy. I don't really like politics a whole lot. I don't really follow it too much because it's out of my control. You guys already know I like to focus on my controllable. Mm. But the reason I've jumped on here to tell you guys a story is because as I went back home to vote and I did my vote and got all that mess out of the way, I kind of rode around my hometown and looked around and I was just like, man, Like you can't go back. And it just reminded me that you can never go back whenever you leave, you know, a town, a job, a relationship, a friendship, you know, whatever it is. You can't go back to it Mm. because where you've probably elevated as a person, you've leveled up your life. You know, you've maybe maybe you've left some uh, situation or relationship and you started working on your mental, physical and financial health, you know, really dove deep into personal development, got real spiritual or whatever it is. There's no sense in turning around and going back because it's very likely that that person or that place or those people stayed the same. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I can't come back to this. There's no way I'll ever be able to go back. You know, I had that experience, too. When I left, I did a dramatic change in my life when I was a hermit and I just graduated high school for a couple of years. I didn't go to college because I didn't know what I wanted to do, which was a cope to myself because I was the first one in my family that would have went to college. I had no idea about applications and I fucked off a little bit and got some bad grades. So I would have to pay my way through and I was working a part time job. I was broke. Didn't know where I could get some money to go to school anyways. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. So it'd be a waste of time regardless. I made a incredibly massive decision. And I moved from Atlanta, Georgia to California to go to college there because I had a friend that lived out there. He's like my brother to this day. Shout out to Rich and out on my own. I went from like being at the teat of my parents living in their house, 20 something years old to completely went by myself with a couple thousand in my pocket. And my friend helped me apply, get the school, get the loans and started my life. I left a boy. And by the time I came back a few years later, I came back a man, a completely different person. My life completely transformed. I was a new person. You couldn't recognize who I was when I came back. And that feeling stuck when I came back and I started my business. And within six months, I started making a ton of money. I went from peanut butter and jellies, $50 a month budget, dead broke, struggling in college to being able to afford $1,000 steak dinners six months after opening my business. And my first $100,000 a month at age 27. I took a big gamble on myself and it paid off. And when I saw, I would go visit my parents. I lived at that time when I was running the business in downtown Atlanta. And I'd visit my parents' house and they lived in the Northeast metro area. And I saw my high school friends, my middle school friends, elementary friends, right? That live in the neighborhood that some of them were still there. And the guy walks over as he's mowing his lawn. It's my friend, my childhood friend. And I've been gone for years. I haven't seen this guy. Years. And he's doing the same old shit. Same old job. Same old complaining. Ended up getting some chick pregnant. One night stand. Didn't even like her. And I'm just like over here, dude, I just cleared in my mind $100,000 more than what our houses were worth. And the car I pulled up in was a Porsche, which was, was, was worth more than my parents' house or his house. The massive elevation I experienced in those prior five or so years had made us so disconnected that I couldn't really talk to him about anything. He hadn't seen anything, hadn't experienced anything. He just became stagnant in life, trapped in a sense, and truly trapped now because he had a baby on the way with a woman he didn't even like. Imagine that, dude. Imagine. 
You can't go back to the old town. It's a weird feeling anyway. When I was driving back into town and I remember like the moments, those memories hit you when you're turning that street corner, when you see the place you used to get pizza at, when you're passing the mall or the gas station you used to hang out at, all the memories come flooding back. It was like another person. I was remembering who I used to be for a second. Wow, I used to hang out here. Wow, I used to do this here. Met that girl there, went on a date here, blah, blah, blah. And I couldn't believe that feeling, it's like a, it's a disconnect within yourself. And it almost feels like there's a bit of anxiety there, like you're going back, going, regressing in some way or another. It's almost like the body, the spirit wants you to push on forward, to expand the boundaries, to constantly wander the unknown. But when you retreat back into the place you, or maybe you could say escaped from or expanded from, it feels like a, t- a, f- a type of regression. It wasn't a good feeling. Yeah. And Let's see what else he says before I keep going on. Because I went back for a few years. Um, I went back for a few years, back to my old neighborhood, back back to my old town, my old neighborhood, started seeing some of the same old faces mm-hmm. and hanging out with some of the same old people that I kind of grew up with. And you know what? Where I had elevated, where I had been out and done all these things. So I had all these cool, crazy stories to tell or where I had, you know, worked in these different types of environments or been around these different types of people or, you know, cause I've stood in houses and been on golf courses and all these things with, with high net worth people or my time in the army, just, just all of it. And they stood there and they were the same. They sat stagnant and they stayed the same. And so every time I would tell stories or open my mouth, it would sound like I'm bragging, but really I'm just telling stories, yep. but I'm telling them to the wrong people. So when you start to really level up, when you start to really do what's best for you, you start to make more money, you get a better job, you know, you get healthier, whatever it is, you can't bring the people around you with you. If they're not willing to walk beside you, push you along, motivate you and do everything that needs to be done, do exactly what you're doing. And then some that way you guys motivate each other back and forth. And sometimes that's why I miss the army, man, because. It, it wasn't just me motivating people. It was other people motivating me. So you had competition. It was the, it was the first high performance thing that I'd ever done in my life was being the. I say that, you know, I was on the wrestling team in high school, but the military was really the first high performance thing that I ever did in my life because you had to compare yourself against other high performance individuals. You know, we'd, we'd take off for a 10, 15, 20 mile run in the mornings and then come back and do your work all day. Or, you know, I, I, I didn't realize that when I was in, but now that I'm out and years have passed, I realized that, man, I was comparing myself to other high performance people yep. and now I'm alone. Mm. And that's very difficult because a lot of civilians, a lot of people in the civilian sector are not high performing. Yep. High performance can be taught. It can be trained. It can be instilled in you. You do not have to be born with it. Being born with it helps, but it can be taught. You can be trained and it can be instilled within you because they do that to soldiers. It is hard to go from the United States military and I hopefully could speak for all branches and go from being in the United United States military and then come back to a civilian life because a civilian life is way slower. It's way slower. Mm-hmm. But when I was riding around, I saw a couple of people, a couple of faces that I recognized and I was going to pull over and shoot the shit. And I was like, nah, for what? You know, because when I lived here, like these people weren't fooling with me. They, they rumored and lied. They ran my name through the ground to the ground because, man, basically what had happened was I went back to my old neighborhood. I'm driving a fifty, sixty thousand dollar car. I'm wearing, you know, three piece suits, nice clothes, things like that. They're mm. they're, you know, walking, riding bicycles, driving rust buckets. You know, I mean, everybody's, <laughs> you know, my I, I I grew up in uh, Paducah, Kentucky, little bitty old town, and Paducah. everybody there. I'd say if you went there, it looks like two thousand five right now. The way the people dress. <laughs> it looks like 2005. And for they're those broke. that are living in 2025 or 2030 already, they 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 slander the shit out of them. Damn. So because I drove nice, dressed nice, presented myself well, I was gay. And it yeah. wasn't just like, oh, some guy called me gay boohoo. It wasn't like that. It was like <laughs> like they harassed you. They spread it through the town. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, like I mean, it, it was... <laughs> And, I, and there's no way that I can live in an environment like it was so toxic, so nasty. So because I dressed nice, drove nice, I lived nice, I carried myself in a in a certain manner. I tried to, you know, had these mannerisms about myself, a politeness, and I'm surrounded by all these fake ass gangsters. I was gay because I had nice clothes and nice watches and all these things that they couldn't get themselves. So I was crabs in a bucket. Uh, they hate to see you succeed. The craziest shit ever. When you go back to these old towns, they hate 
to see you successful. It reminds them of how they're trapped and never accomplished anything. That happened to me while I was busting my ass, making all that money, starting to buy better clothes inside nicer cars. My lifestyle was upgrading. And when they would see me around town, bro, stank ass faces or message me online. Yo, haven't seen you, man, in like six months. What's up? Let's go to the club and party. Catch up. I got some business ideas and you got everything together. I think you helped me out. Fuck yourself. Fuck yourself, bro. I, I busted my ass to get here. You did not support me one bit. You couldn't even pick up the phone to call me when I disappeared for months. Busted my ass. Let's check in on me. And You good, bro? You haven't said anything in months. Just checking. You still alive? Hey, you need to decompress. You need to go out. Let's uh, kick it with the boys. Nothing. But now that they see you successful, then they just come crawling out of the fucking woodwork, dude. Everybody wants a handout. Everybody's got a business idea. Everybody's one move away. One investment away from making it. Eat shit. These people are toxic. They shouldn't be in your life at all. I'm telling I'm so sick of that shit. I can't believe how many people, even after YouTube, I hit multiple stages of this shit. There's a point of a couple years ago, I don't know, where I was doing shorts and the channel was getting like a hundred fucking million views in a month or some crazy shit like that. A bunch of them were going viral. And I couldn't believe the people that were DMing me, messaging me, and emailing me from my childhood, bro, that I hadn't seen since I was like 15 years old, 14 years old talking about i can't believe it i was scrolling through youtube and i saw you i was like wow i know the guy so like what's up man what you where are you living now what are you doing let's go get something to drink same shit with the chicks dude it was absolutely shocking to see how many girls i used to talk to just randomly but one chick messaged me she's like hey you remember me we matched on tinder once uh, what <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about i haven't even lived in that town in like three four fucking years what is happening Bro, people are disgusting leeches, man. Holy shit. That is why once you get on this path of self-improvement, once you start elevating your life, you need to find new, completely new. You have to leave everyone behind. You do because they won't grow at your pace and they'll envy you for it. You need to find a new set of friends that are also firing on all cylinders and achieving great things in life that won't compare you and them. You're in completely different facets, facets of in society, ex like top one percenters in whatever you each decide to specialize in and you just come together on the mutual fact that you're both high performing humans and you enjoy being around similarly wired people mentally it's so refreshing dude once you find a friend group i found that friend group later on in arizona with all the boys shout outs to you guys you know who you are the whole phoenix group and all of them were top one percenters in everything that they did high performing individuals next level human beings once you find a friend group like that, the whole civilian life he's talking about, it's so true. The average person is so well below their potential. It's incredible. Like the fact that for us, going on a 15, 20 mile hike, completely normal. That was our idea of fun. Most people would say that's some grueling ass shit. Like, oh my God, how could you do 15, 20 miles? That was our idea of fun. Going out there and running 10, 15 miles nonstop. That's great, bro. That's a nice warm up run. That's a good, decent tempo. And then we could go on the hike. Imagine, I, I used to remember pulling up to like Dutch Bros or to the equivalent of Starbucks for the guys on the East Coast. And it would be like five, six, not, no, seven in the morning because my, my run would be finished. And pulling up, smiling, feeling fucking great. I just ran 10 plus miles, already did a cold plunge. I'm feeling super energized, getting the coffee and starting the day. Pull up, roll the window down and just shooting the shit with the baristas. And they're asking me, how are you doing? Good morning. And I'm like, I'm feeling great. I just ran 10 miles. And everybody has the same reaction on their face. What? 10 miles? I haven't even run a mile in years. And I'm like, bro, we are not the same. There's just a different type of human out there. And you have to find them. But you will only find them and run in their circles when you start to become that as well. That's the thing. You can't surround yourself with the people you are not becoming yet. You have to be that first. Then you're able to hold on to these kinds of people. So yeah, shout out to everybody in Phoenix. Get after it. And it was, it was, it was, God, it was, it was horrible. And they <laughs> would spread that so much to where it got to where I couldn't even date in that town. And then it got to the point that I didn't want to date. It got to where I didn't want to date there. And I was like, you know what? I don't want anything to do with these people. So I, that's why I tell you guys, like all this stuff that I've learned, like I, this is, this is real shit. 
if you start to do the best things for yourself and you start to really level up your life, the first thing they're going to do is attack your sexuality. If you go from being the mechanic at the garage to a high end real estate agent, they're going to tell everybody you're gay. I, I promise <laughs> you, man, it just, it, that's just like the first thing they do. And I, I learned that and I heard that. I heard 50 Cent and Charlemagne the God talk about that in an uh, interview, that the first sign of success is for them to attack your sexuality. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had to deal with that. And then every time I turned down one of these old busted Pillsbury can biscuit girls, every time I turned down something like that, you know, they'd be like, oh, he must be gay. He turned me down. He didn't want none mm -hmm. of me. And it's like, no, you guys already know my thought process. I don't want unwanted pregnancies. I don't want these problems. I don't I don't want to date just to be dating. It's a waste of time. So I, I prefer to move forward alone and stay away from it. And so there you go. It'd be like, oh, he must be gay. Then he must this. He must that. And so it was always just constant. And if I had conversations telling about, you know, the things I was into or what I was trying to create or what I'm trying to do, like if I went back there and I pulled up on the people that I just saw and I told them that, hey, man, I'm starting a YouTube channel. I'm trying to get into podcasting and broadcasting and I'm trying to logo and design and do all these different things, these ideas that I have. It would sound like I'm bragging. Mm hmm. Because they don't have these ideas. They're, like I told you guys, there are people in the world that are just comfortable with sitting on the porch, drinking beer. And that's fine because we need them. They keep the world in balance. But you can't go back, guys. You can't go back to an old relationship, old town, old friendship, old partnership. When it ends, it ends. Wish them the best. Have no ill will and carry on. You can't go back. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why I don't want any more kids, because kids make you hold on to relationships that ultimately end. I don't have a relationship with either one of my son's mother at all. But because I have children with them, I am forever entwined with them. And those that have kids, you know what I mean? Even if you're not with the partner, with the other parent, you know exactly what you what I mean. There's always this invisible thread between you. Nobody can see it, but you're always mentally, emotionally scarred, attached, everything mm -hmm. with that other person. I don't want any more. I don't want any more children because of shit like that, because it makes you hold on to a relationship that would have ultimately ended and you would have never spoke to them again. I would have never in my life spoke to my second son's mother again, ever in my life. Would I talk to her again? Damn. But because we have a kid together, I still don't talk to her. But because we have a kid together, I am forever entwined with this woman. And that's a person that I, I completely regret in my life. <laughs> I don't consider my son a mistake. He is here now, but his mother, I wish I would have chose better. She was horrible. She was the type of woman that would go to the bathroom and beat on herself and call the police and act like God, hundred percent. She's the type of woman that will go and do a lot of violent, irate things to herself or to property and then act as if you were the reason, act <laughs> as if you did it. She'll tear up your cars, tear up your house, call the police and act like it was you. And one time she called the police on me. I wasn't even home. Damn. I wasn't even home. And next thing I know, I'm at Walmart shopping and uh, I get a phone call. I don't, this, this is another one of those rambling ass conversations. I'm at Walmart shopping and I get a phone call from a police officer, random number. I'm like, who the hell is a police officer? And it's a phone. It's a police officer. He's like, hey, Mr. Edson, I'm blah, blah, blah. Can you come and back here and talk to me? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. And I went back because I knew I didn't do it. If I'd done something, I wouldn't have went. But I went back because I knew I didn't do anything. And it turned into this big old ordeal, big old altercation. But that's 100 percent who she was as a person. And Jesus. it's like I would never speak to somebody like that again. But I had a kid with her. So now I just don't speak to her at all. I just pay my support and I move on. Mm. And um, one of you guys had asked me, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was that asked me in the comments. You said, man, aren't you scared that child support will see these videos and find out? And no, I'm not scared. I'm not scared at all. I thought about that in the very beginning before I started doing this, because ultimately I'm exposing myself to the masses. And I thought about that before I started doing this. But no, I'm not scared, man. And the reason I'm not scared is because we all know it takes two to five years to build and brand a business. My son is 13 years old. So it's going to take two to five years for me to build and brand this. You know, if I fast track it, I could probably start doing something decent in two years, but it'll probably take me five years before I see a real return on the investment. Who knows? Though? Who knows? It's the Internet. It's a way to reach. Uh, meet. It's a way to reach a massive amount of people. It's a mm -hmm. way to scale at a very high rate of speed. It's the yeah. Internet. So who knows? Maybe it maybe I blow up by summer. Who knows? Mm. Hello. But am I scared? No, not at all. Because who am I to run from it? Look at all the success successful people. This is why I tell you guys there's no way to beat the child support system. Because look at all the successful people that have just ha look at his mentality, though. The guy doesn't break for nothing. It's no surprise 
that he has a shelf full of books and his mentality is wired this way. His face isn't in his phone consuming TikTok or anime or any of his bullshit that a lot of young guys are consuming or coping with. Look at this, man. The man reads. He's got a book selection. Every single person I've noticed in the group I even mentioned before, they're all voracious readers. All of us read a lot. It's the only, it's like the purest form of information you could have in this modern world today because nothing you, on the internet, you can't really trust anything anyways. And um, everything is manipulated so much. All the recent, uh, let's just say, knowledge that we've had is so far detached from reality, it's not worth consuming. So then we have video forms like this, audibles, if you prefer that, but nothing like building focus, reading a book, sitting down and really applying your mind to it 100%. Guys, the, the knowledge that is encapsulated in these are worth far more than the book itself. I highly recommend reading. I grew up in an environment where reading was gay. They'd call you gay for reading. That's how I, that's where I grew up in the neighborhood I grew up in. You're a fucking nerd. You're gay. Yeah, look at this dude. The, the word that rhymes with maggot. That's what you were. Ha <laughs> yeah, he likes reading books. What a, mm. Whoa, wow, look at this guy. You getting ready for college, you little, mm. Yeah, they dissuaded you from gaining knowledge to empower yourself. They wanted to keep you stupid, stupid like they are. Because if you start getting too smart, you start talking about advanced topics. You start having bigger ideas. We got problems. I've had to pay child support. Tom Cruise just came off child support at $33,000 a month. 50 Ooh. Cent was on child support paying over, I think he was paying fifty four, fifty six thousand dollars $56,000 a month. Mm. You got Robert De Niro and Al Pacino's old asses on child support right now. You know what I'm saying? So like, who am I to try and run from it? Who am I to try to beat it? So if I blow up on a massive scale, I'm not going to go willfully give this information over. But if I blow up on a massive scale, you can guarantee the first thing I'm going to do is hire two attorneys. I'm going to start setting things up and trusting this and that and doing that. I'm going to do the things I need to do and I'm going to protect myself. Cook and I'm going to give them the bare minimum because they've done nothing to create it. It's not my son's fault. It's not, he'll get whatever, he needs college, whatever, things like that. I've already thought about this. If I create enough for myself, then he can still get whatever. It's not his fault at all. It's his mother's. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do whatever I can to postpone it to where she receives nothing. And that's the God's honest truth, man. I'll hire, I'll hire a couple lawyers and I'll have them say, hey, I got no problem with paying this amount of money, but lock it into an account for the boy because his mother will waste every dollar of it. She's wasting every dollar. He's, he's already received over $100,000 in child support already. And she's yeah. wasted every dollar of it. Uh, if you if you look her up, I'm not going to throw her name out there, but if you looked her up, you would just see where she's bought cars and motorcycles and stupid shit. Just bought shit for no reason. And he's got nothing to show for it, but he doesn't understand it because he's too young. He thinks it's cool. He thinks his mom's doing the damn thing. He doesn't. He doesn't understand it. And the sickest thing, man, that I think of is the only way he'll ever really understand is if it happens to him. And this mm. is why I tell women, what are you going to say to your sons when some woman does them the exact same way you did their father? Because mm. the sickest thing to me is that the only way for him to understand this is for it to happen to him. And yeah. as his father, Golly. I do not want it to happen to him. So I would just rather he did not understand. You understand what I'm saying? I would rather he just not understand because I would never want him to go through. I won't want either one of my sons to go through what I've had to go through with this. But to jump back to it, man, you know, there's just no way when I was riding around my town and I was just thinking and looking, I was like, there's no way I can come back here. My mindset is, has so much. I've, I've elevated too far past these people. I've shifted mm -hmm. so much to where I don't understand them. And they won't understand me because I'll never understand why you would want to stay stagnant in a position like that of nothingness. And they'll never understand me. And that's how I'll, I'll always look at them as bums. And they'll always run around telling everybody I'm gay and I'm this and I'm that <laughs> because I chose to create a better life for myself. Yeah, you're too, you're too good for them now. That's what they say. You can't climb the mountain of success by holding on to the weight of the past. I've told you guys this a Ooh. million times. Bars. You cannot climb the mountain of success by holding on to the weight of the past Bars. in order for you to get to wherever you're trying to go in order for something new to appear. I have something similar too on a more personal level. You have to kill the person you used to be in order to become the person you are destined to be. You can't form the new you until you've, how do I say this in a YouTube friendly way, ended the old you. I can't, it'll get demonetized. It's the platform we're on, but yeah, you have to kill the person you used to be in order to become what you need to be. Very true, guys.
And that's one of the concepts, by the way, in Psycho-Cybernetics, the book I recommend the most to everybody. It's by Maxwell Maltz. Again, Psycho-Cybernetics. It's a life-changing book. It talks about this exact concept right here of your self-image and how you need to destroy every self-belief you have that has shaped the person you think you are fundamentally. Because all those beliefs aren't actually rooted in reality. It's just your interpretation of the experiences you've had in your life. But it's not who you actually are. Who you actually are is who you want to be, who you dream of becoming. But what's weighing you down is your false set of beliefs due to the way you've interpreted your experiences in the past. For example, like things in the book, you had big ears in school, you got made fun of, and now an insecurity got rooted into you where you tried to hide your ears all the time, or you think you have an ugly nose, or whatever other insecurity that you were told you're too stupid to do math, you're too dumb to do math, so then you start doing bad on math because you, the self-belief was injected that you are dumb at math when you may actually be gifted at math. And they've actually done these studies on kids. When you reinforce positive beliefs onto kids and tell them like, you're great, you are an amazing person, you can do math, you are so gifted, they actually start performing better. The confidence they get, the way they talk to themselves changes. Yeah, these are big, powerful tenants to life that they don't teach us in school, unfortunately. Here in your life, something old has to go away. You have to mm -hmm. get rid of something for something new to come. You have to make room for it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's in your life. I don't know what it is, but you're going to have to get rid of something to make room for it. That's why I tell you guys to sell your shit, get back to zero, pay off your debt, sell your shit. It's the fastest way to do it. Get back to zero and start stacking cash and get cash heavy. You, if you do that, you'll fully understand what Robert Edson's talking about. For anybody in the comments that's already told me they've sold off a couple things to do this, do that, then you already get it. Because it's like, dude, I parted with a few items and now I've paid off X amount of dollars worth of debt. And I'm so closer to zero or I am back to zero and now I'm getting cash heavy and I'm getting ready to prepare myself, position myself to execute on a vision, on a plan, on investment. And mm -hmm. that's um, that's why I tell people to do that, man, because there is no way for something new to enter your life while you try to hold on to everything that you have from the past. It's just impossible. So maybe you're sitting on a bunch of money right now. Maybe you got 20 grand and you hate where you live, but you don't want to spend the 20 grand then you better suck it up and get used to where you're living because it's going to cost you that much just to leave. You mm -hmm. know, it's going to cost you five to 10 grand just to move 20 grand to do it comfortable and nice and move into a decent place. And this, I mean, it's going to cost money. So you're over here trying to hold on to what little money you have whenever you moving to a new location, to a new city, a new town may be the best thing. Maybe you spend that 20 to move to a new town and then you find a great job, which you should apply for jobs before you move, just saying, but you find a great job paying you double or triple because I I mean, it's out there, I promise, than what the company in your little town is paying you and yep. you've moved and now you've doubled your income. The 20 grand comes right back. You're in a better location. Within that first year, year and a half, you got your 20 grand back. You got a better job. You're doing better. You're living better. You're happier. You're healthier. You're around better people. You get what I'm saying? Yep. In order for something new to come in, something old must go. I don't know what that old is, but it must go. Mm -hmm. And never go back. Never go backwards, man. Do not go back to old relationships, friendships, boyfriend, girlfriend, jobs, towns, people, places, things. Do not go back to it, man. Once you leave, mm -hmm. it's like an old buddy of mine told me in the army. He told me, he's like, you left home for a reason. Why would you go back? When I told him I was getting out and I was going to go back home, he was like, you left home for a reason. Why would you go back? And that mm -hmm. stuck with me forever. And he was right. Because when I went back, my mindset, you know, after a decade in the army going back home, I was completely different person and they stayed there, stayed the same. They never got off the porch. They sat around smoking weed, drinking and bullshitting their whole time away. And I was a completely different person. I'd lived all over the country from Atlanta to L.A. I'd been all over the world to multiple different countries. Conus and no conus, man. I'd been all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I would tell them stories about Dubai and they, they looked yeah. like I was bragging. Really, I was just talking. I was just having these conversations, you know, so I can't I can't hang out with people like that no more. And that'll be the same way for you guys, man. If you go from 40 grand a year and you start making 85, six figures, you can't go back to hanging out with the 40 grand a year people, man. Mm -hmm. Unless they fully understand and have the mindset like we have, you can't go back there and hang out with them anymore because they're going to think you're bragging when you're like, man, I was able to save 10 grand or I'm able to buy a new car or I got. Mm -hmm. I remember how excited I was when I signed my first big job and cleared a hundred thousand dollars and tried to talk to people I hang out with about, you know, how happy I am that this happened and they're making 30,000, 40,000 a year. I made in one month money that would take them multiple years to get to. 
How do you think that conversation goes? What do you think they feel when you tell them shit like that? It's you're bragging, bro. Wow, you're such a fucking big shot, bro. I don't want to hear about your business and all that shit, dude. You got lucky anyways. Not everybody could be as lucky as you. That's the the amount of hate, the amount of envy. And you just stop wanting to be around these people anymore. You can't even hang out. You can't even hang out because they can't even afford to do shit that you want to do now in your elevated life. I can't take you to a nice five-star restaurant, bro. We can't even take our girls and have a nice steak dinner because it'll blow your whole fucking weekly budget. And I don't want to be the guy that makes you feel bad because you're not elevated in life and we no longer do the same shit or have the same tastes or interests. I want to chill with you, but I don't want to go to the fucking hole in the wall bucket wing bar for $2 beers. It's not that I think I'm better. I'm just in a different position. And unfortunately, you stayed the same and got left behind. And you're trying to drag me back. No. Nah. I got a new watch. They're going to look at you like you're bragging, like you're just freaking, oh, look at this gloating asshole telling me what he did and this, this. Mm-hmm. They, they start to secretly hate on you. They do. And it's like, man, you didn't see how hard I worked. You didn't see all the hours I put in, the nights that I struggled. You didn't see me living on nothing, really beans and rice for me to be able to get to where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? You didn't see any of that. That's what you hear these people talk about, an overnight success. You know what I'm saying? But they nobody saw the five or 10 years worth of grinding and getting after it. But then all of a sudden, you're an overnight success. <laughs> I mean, it's like you weren't there putting in the work with me, and now you hate on me because you know I worked my ass off in the dark while you were sleeping, drinking, and partying. I worked my ass off for five years or 10 years, mm-hmm. and then boom, I'm successful. I'm rich. I'm getting after it, and I got what I wanted, and you you hate me for that. You know what I'm saying? But that's what they do. I've never hated anyone because of what they had. I've always looked at them and I've realized it's like my granddaddy told me, man, my granddaddy said he's an um, old school Marine from uh, from the Korea War era. And he said, if the man in front of you can do it, you can do it, too. Mm-hmm. If the man in front of you can do it, you can do it, too. Motivation. And that's stuck with me for the rest of my life, because so far, I mean, I'd never forget it. If the man in front of you can do it, you can do it, too. Because when I see somebody that's successful, wealthy, driving a nice car that I want or living in a house or a family or whatever it is that I like and I want it, I'm like, man, how did he get it? What does he do? I want to know that guy. I don't hate that guy. I'm not mad at that guy. I'm not jealous of that guy. I want to know him. I want to know his secrets. I want to know his tips, his tricks. What did he do? Mm -hmm. That's who that's who I am. And I mean that I mean that, guys. I mean, that's who I am. I want to know what he did. I want him to teach me, show me. I want this person to tell me what he did to point me in the right direction. Never do I look at him like, look at that asshole with all this money and with this and with that. You know, I'm a white kid from the ghetto, man. Nobody knows hate like I do. (laughs) I've experienced so much hate from the people I grew up around that I'll never go back home. That shit, there's nothing there for me, man. I'm glad to be from there. It gave me my start. I appreciate it, but fuck them. That's it. That's where they're at. (laughs) Fuck them. They can stay there. And I'll never go back. And it reminded me that as I rode around that town, like no matter what, I don't give a shit. If I got to take my camping gear and go sleep in the woods, I'm never coming back here. There's nothing there. There's no jobs there. There's no job market. And the housing is high as hell. So when I see the people there, I'm like, why the hell are you here? And then you're mad at me because I left. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> Stay there. Enjoy. Enjoy it. So I don't know, man. <laughs> you can't go back, guys. Ever. You can't go back. Words of wisdom. Channels Robert C. Edison. Guys, give him a follow. I mean, there's not much more else you could say. And his video went viral. I mean, he hit all the points. I shared a little bit of my story. Hope you guys liked it too. Thoughts on this episode? Like, comment, subscribe. The usual. You know, they suppress us for speaking about certain topics. Hurts the fifis. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the second channel and um, join us on the private community, man, love to have you for some calls. We do them five times a week and uh, check it out on the second channel. See if it toots your horn and maybe you got some wisdom to share or need some help writing your ship and finding out your path in life. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everyone.